So I had been attending uh, Wednesday evening class at First United Methodist Church, St. Petersburg, Florida, and they were examining some author's book. I wish I could remember the guy's, the author's name, but he's a very popular author. And uh, a series of books, millionaire because of it, <clears throat> trying to simplify Christianity, prosperity gospel, and so on. Well, I kept saying, well, this author's saying this, but look what the Bible says that contradicts it. He didn't like that. And this is just first couple of sessions. And I was asked, everybody was allowed to, to participate, and everybody was encouraged. Well, Bob, what do you have to say? And I said, well, that sounds interesting, but you know, the Bible says this, and the Bible says that. Shortly thereafter, I received an email from Dave, the class teacher, banning me from the class held on Wednesdays at First United Methodist Church in St. Petersburg. Subject to the email, Wednesday night class. I have discussed the situation with our senior pastor, already oh, reported me to the senior pastor, and have been in prayer, and from this, I write this email. Oh, wonderful prayer. I don't think you prayed to God. That wasn't your answer to ban me from your Bible study. Upon hearing of the class on 5-12-04 in my absence and in regard to last night, I tend to feel that this class is not the right place for you now. Right. We have been very effective with this class thus far in other offerings at FUMC. But for us to start out and then have some drop out of the after two classes and others ready to leave is unacceptable to me as the leader of this class. I have new people who have not even been involved in a church trying to find their way. I have new visitors that members have uh, brought telling me how exciting this class is, and some are back in for a second offering of the class. I and others have given you the courtesy of letting you speak. Oh, thank you for letting me speak. If, isn't that a participatory class? And with many valid points. Emphasis mine, but not points that are going to be discussed within the bounds of this book. Actually, all of them were germane, because I was just discussing the points that the book made. And for the short period we have, actually we got through the class agenda on time. So he's implying that I'm disturbing the class from finishing? No. Here at FUMC, First United Methodist Church, we're going, we are using this class as a guide to help those who want to know their purpose in, in a general way and at times in a deeper way. Wow. It seems that this author conflicts with a lot of your views and the Bible, and it is not productive for our class if you keep cautioning us or saying that he is not exactly right all the time. I didn't say, I didn't say all the time anyway. I did not contradict everything the author said, often supported what we covered in his book. Again, I have folks who feel comfortable, uncomfortable speaking up at all in your presence. Wow. And who the first night were eager to come but now want to leave. Interesting that I have such an effect on others, and that is the criterion by which one is included or excluded in a Bible study class. He told me I said a lot of valid points. Yeah, but we don't want you there because people don't want to come back. Wow, isn't that their problem? I cannot let this happen and I am not about to debate issues in front of these visitors and members. So I'm a visitor. Really? Again, this is neither the place nor is it the time to do that. Scripture says differently. 2 Timothy 4, 2. We're ready in all seasons to argue and debate the faith. Take a look at that. This guy doesn't know the Bible. And, oh, it's the church-driven books. I don't remember what his name is. He wrote all these church-driven books. 2 Timothy 4.2 I have to follow what this book says. Now listen, 2 Timothy 4.2 Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Repu reprove, rebuke, exhort with great patience and instruction. It's not just for the teacher, it's for every believer. Right? In season and out, it's not the right time. When is the right time when you're preaching extra against the Bible by this uh, church driven author, Warren or somebody, uh, and he's wrong, totally wrong? 
So, well, the Bible says this. Well, let's look at the Bible. Let's look at the church-driven book and see whether God's word matches up or not. Let's go with the scriptures, though, when the, the, the Bible is, is uh, there's a difference. Ha honestly, I wouldn't debate anyone on scripture. Scripture says differently. So he says, I wouldn't debate anyone on scripture. Jesus was the greatest debater of all. Philippians 1, 27 to 28, Jude 3. Respect, please respect our class and those who are involved. I do not need someone else to help me lead the class, nor I do, do I want sermonettes on every issue. He's like exaggerating things. I do feel <clears throat> that you mean well, but this cannot and will not continue in this class. So if I mean well and I'm accurate, why do you have a problem? Because people want to leave. Please grant us the courtesy of letting me continue my class in a manner that will let all feel comfortable and that they will want to come back. Again, I do not feel that this is the class for you at this time. So what time is it? What kind of Now, notice a lot of feeling is going on here. Very little reference to scripture, which is what the class is supported, supposed to be about. Rick Warren, Rick Warren. Regards, Dave. My response is as follows. It is interesting to note, oh, there it is, that those who find anything wrong at all with this book are to be excluded in accordance with Rick Warren's purpose-driven church, which book I suppose you are familiar with. Such is the hypocrisy of this point of view, that those who differ from it are not to be contented with lovingly and objectively rather than simply excluded, even told to leave. <coughs> Rick Warren presents an argument why don't you go argue with him? If my points are well taken and accurate, then you will be held accountable for excluding me from the class. Suggest you go here and determine if I am indeed accurate in my point of view, especially on the basis, basics, uh, on the most basic of issues, how to go to heaven. Rick Warren doesn't have the gospel right. My comments were hardly too advanced and addressed only those issues which were brought up in the class. They were also short and to the point. If others are intimidated, perhaps they need to simply listen objectively before they get into an emotional tizzy. The first class was punctuated by others objecting to what I had to say rather than the other way around. This followed by a personal castigation of my behavior as intimidating, too theological, and argumentative. It was interesting to note that it was not me who argued that one shouldn't argue a curious contradiction there. Also interesting was the point that those who objected to my presence made it that made that everyone's point of view should be tolerated. Your mind was to be silenced, yet mine was to be silenced, right? I know that there were some in the class who were in agreement and not intimidated by me at all. Truth is, not a popularity context, contest or something that must necessarily be inclusive of all points of view. I take my examples from our Lord and the Apostle Paul. All believers are commanded to contend for the doctrines of the faith. I thought you knew that. And you look at the study there on my website, contend.htm. Where should one as knowledgeable as I go in your church in order to be accepted is my question. Must I dummy down my comments? I actually did in your class, but it was still considered offensive as you imply. I could have taken over that class with what uh, was falsely being presented by Rick Warren's book. I was not trying to lead the class, only participate. Can you give me several specific examples which were out of godly line? Because he never did answer that. Sec six, I openly agree with much of what the first two chapters said. So it appears you are intolerant of any disagreement at all. Is Rick Warren the Holy Spirit? Well, <clears throat> I attended the second class. The regular teacher attended. The session was apparently a difficult one for Dave the teacher, who objected to much of what I commented on. We covered a number of chapters, and my comments stayed short and topical. I supported much of what was in these chapters, as well as offering Bible, biblical passages which the book contradicted. A key objection was that the book presented the gospel of eternal life as an attempt to have an ongoing relationship with Jesus Christ. I countered with John 3.16, which teaches that eternal life is received at the moment one simply believes in the Son of God being given for one's sin. One's sins. Let's qualify that properly. A number of those in the class agreed with what I had presented, even added to it. They became agitated a number of times as the class progressed. Well, 
Investigating the Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren at First United Methodist Church, St. Petersburg. So we're going into the details of this. That was May 4th, 2004. On Wednesday, I attended a Bible study at a nearby United Methodist Church on the best-selling book, The Purpose Driven Life by Pastor Rick Warren. So we're going into details so I can prove my case in this uh, YouTube. Over the past six months, I have seen and heard of many people reading this book, largely in lieu of a good Bible study. I have read excerpts of it, and it did not impress me as a good substitute for the Bible. Furthermore, the format of it did not focus on a careful examination of Bible passages to support the points made. So more words come out of Rick Warren's book than from the Bible. Should be the other way around. I thought that if I delved into it a bit more, I might get a better perspective of it before I made definitive commentary on it. I presented myself in, the, in class as a Bible student with seminary experience. I explained that I was distressed at the general lack of interest by Christians in serious Bible study. On the other hand, I noticed that there was a great popularity with Pastor Warren's book. This piqued my interest since it seemed to focus on the Christian life. The moderator began the class with an explanation that the format of the class was a participatory one. <clears throat> she then began with chapter one and encouraged class participation with key questions and comments page by page. I answered several questions and immediately found opposition from a number of the attendees. The negative reaction was relatively mild and indirect at first, centering around whether or not a Christian should argue about the Bible. I presented several specific passages, Jude 3 and Philippians 1, 27 and 28, and the examples of our Lord and the Apostle Paul, who persistently and strenuously argued with those who opposed the doctrines of the faith. Yeah, that's the contend passage. All right. So you can look at that. It gives you reasons why we should contend from the faith right out of the Bible. So at the end of the class, several participants and the moderator herself became very agitated and openly, openly accused me of being dogmatic, argumentative, and intimidating. I was directly accused of presenting concepts in the class that were too theological. I don't know what that means. That Theo is God. Too much like God? We're studying the Bible, implying that I had too much Bible knowledge to suit the class agenda. The biggest complaint, however, ever, was that I did not allow that one opinion about the Bible is just as good as another. Really, as a point of reference, most of what I commented on was a simple explanation of the gospel and eternal security using it, John 3.16 and Ephesians 2.8.9. It is interesting to note that every time someone accuses me of being argumentative, they go into an argumentative mode, prove that one should not argue, finishing it off in a flurry of personal attacks and condemnation, all the while accuse me of being uh, unchristian-like. <coughs> As I walked out, an older woman walked with me for quite a while, posing one question to me after another. I presented the gospel clearly to her, and she responded with amazement. Pray that she will also respond also with belief. I wonder if I have Rick Warren on there. We'll check on this uh, next time. 